Good morning and welcome to worship on this Pentecost Sunday. As we begin, we acknowledge that here in Saskatoon, we are on Treaty 6 territory and the traditional homeland of numerous First Nations, including Cree, Dene, Nakoda, Soto, and Ojibwe, as well as the Métis Nation. We acknowledge with respect the history, spirituality, and culture of the peoples with whom the treaties were signed, the territories on which we reside, and our responsibility as treaty people. We also honor the heritage and gifts of the Métis people. May we live with respect on this land and live in peace and friendship. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
we pray. God of wind and flame, send your life-giving spirit upon your people. Give fire to our words, strength to our witness, and boldness to our proclamation of your wondrous work in Christ, who with you and the spirit lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Pentecost was the Jewish harvest festival that marked the 50th day after Passover. Luke portrays the Holy Spirit being poured out upon the disciples before the gathered and astonished people assembled in Jerusalem for the festival. Filled with the Spirit, the disciples were able to witness to the power of Christ's resurrection. A reading from Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one of them heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speak about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and per perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea, all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known. to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and from your sons and your daughters, there shall be prophecy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Holy word, holy wisdom, 
Thanks be to God. Reading from Psalm 104. How manifold are your works, O Lord. In wisdom, you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide, with its swarms too many to number, living things both small and great. There go the ships to and fro, and Leviathan, which you made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand and they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. O Lord, rejoice in all your works. You look at the earth and it trembles. You touch the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. O God of eternal light, heaven and earth are the work of your hands, and all creation sings your praise and beauty, as in the beginning, my, by your spirit, you gave life and order to all that is, so by the same spirit redeem us and all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Paul is helping the Christian, the Corinthians, understand the relationship between our God-given unity and the Spirit-created diversity. The Spirit creates the unity of faith and gives all Christians diverse gifts for the common benefit of all. We need one another's diverse spiritual gifts because the same spirit has given them to each person for the common good. A reading from 1 Corinthians. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another, by the same Spirit, faith. To, a, to another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles, to another, prophecy, to another, the discernment of spirits, to another, various kinds of tongues, another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually just as the spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, 
we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. And we were all made to drink of one spirit. Holy word, holy wisdom. Thanks be to God. The risen Jesus appears to the disciples, offering them a benediction, a commission, and the gift of the Holy Spirit. God be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When Jesus said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God, our loving parent, Jesus Christ, the risen one, and the Holy Spirit, our comfort and guide. Amen. God, through the Holy Spirit, is up to new things, surprising things, things that make us uncomfortable. The Spirit's breath and movement giving life to the church, life to the soul, and life to those mired in doubt, fear, mistrust, and suspicion. I'll ask you to raise a hand. Who here loves surprises? Anyone else? <laughs> a few of us. Well, if TikTok is to be believed, some of the surprises that are recorded are quite fun to watch. People's reactions when a loved one they have not seen just shows up or someone returns from a tour of duty in the army some hiding in boxes and just popping out all of a sudden. Some just standing at the door and ringing the doorbells on unsuspecting family members to surprise them. Or someone hiding in, a, in the side of a doorway and just jumping out. Oftentimes, there's a look of startled shock. Eyes get big or tears start to fall. Hands clasping face, clasping their faces, you know, in surprise and disbelief. Something like that ever happened to anyone? Well, not everyone likes or appreciates the surprises. Some get angry and embarrassed. And some have an aversion to the unplanned, spontaneous nature of a surprise. It represents a loss of control or grounding. And it was this way for some in our reading from Acts. Devout Jews had gathered for the Pentecost celebration, which at the time was 50 days after Passover, which was a celebration of the harvest and the giving of the law on Mount Sinai. They were trying to make sense how illiterate Galileans are all of a sudden sounding articulate, speaking in every language. But not only that, everyone understands what they are saying. How can this be? They reason they must be drunk. And they could be drunk at 10 o'clock in the morning, I suppose. But in his first sermon, Peter explains that this has happened not because they've been drinking, 
but instead because of the Holy Spirit, which has been sent by God, just as Jesus promised. Surprise! As theologian Nancy Claire Pittman writes, surprise, the spirit has arrived. Surprise, we can no longer sit in our lounge chairs and watch the world go by. Surprise, we have words to speak and work to do. Surprise, we are together a people with a mission, a church. Pentecost is a day for surprises that we cannot control or manipulate any more than we can the fire of the Spirit. This Spirit, claims Peter, is the same one prophesied in Joel. The reason the Holy Spirit has come now is to fulfill the observance of the coming of the law. According to Charles Talbert, it was also associated with the covenant between God and the people established at Mount Sinai and included a call to attend again to the law given to Moses and the people. The Holy Spirit's appearance fulfills the law. In other words, what was prophesied by Joel is happening now. Surprise! But that is not the only truth or good news in this text. The Holy Spirit comes as a gift for the purpose of the whole world. This is also affirmed in Paul's Corinthians correspondence. The gift is available to all people. It is not restricted to whoever is considered to be in the in crowd be they ancient priests of the temple in Jerusalem, pastors, or other church leaders in modern church hierarchies. And not only that, but the Holy Spirit also brings hope. Luke is concerned to show that the end of time as God has created it has actually begun in the events of Pentecost. And that the awareness of this coming of God's end time should not produce despair but precisely the opposite, hope. A hope that propels the Christian community forward into a mission of witness and proclamation. As Robert Wall says, simply put, Pentecost initiates Israel into a new epoch, the last days of God's salvation history, when things said and done by Jesus' successors take on added urgency not of an imminent apocalypse in the case of Acts, but rather of a mission to restore God's kingdom to Israel. It's a surprise. We are living in the end of the age, but we are not to be fearful or despairing, but hopeful and hope-filled, propelled into our mission, aligning our lives with the restoration that God is bringing about through the work of the Holy Spirit in the world. Peter, by linking this work of the Holy Spirit with that prophesied spirit in Joel, intends to link the coming of the Spirit with various manifestations of reversal of the status quo. This reversal of the status quo is shocking, surprising, and for some does not represent a good or happy surprise. And even now, as we look to the politics and rhetoric out of the US and even parts of Canada this last couple of weeks, there's not a reversal of status quo nor a moving forward toward inclusion of all. As soon as we have a glimmer of moving forward as a society, there is a resistance and a sense of threat and statements made against that movement. The progress that includes all is seen as a threat to many. Be it age, sex, gender, race, economic status, sexual orientation, or any other descriptor or discrimination that society can come up with, there seems to be an increasing threat, exclusion, judgment, hate, 
and discrimination. For Black, Indigenous, people of color, there continues to be racial stereotypes, violence, and discrimination, and a similar marginalization of those who identify as transgender, non-binary, and those in the LGBTQ2 spirit ally community. We've heard of book bans and even the poetry of Amanda Gorman given at the inauguration of President Biden is banned in some states now. We struggle, I struggle, to make sense of the hate speech and dehumanizing of those who are anything other than white or settler, cisgender and heterosexual. We wonder where is the spirit of inclusion, the love and grace of God for all that this Pentecost event is supposed to inaugurate. There is a desire by some to control the gospel and how, when, and where the spirit moves, a desire to stifle it or put it in a chokehold. But the spirit of God will not be controlled or, or coerced. The wind and fire of the spirit instead breaks into closed, locked rooms, dancing along and eventually entering the most hardened of hearts. The spirit breathes and dances. It moves and pours out over into the world. It is not controlled. It is unstoppable. Such is the movement of God in the world. The spirit comes suddenly like the wind that hovered over the waters of the chaos in Genesis and the fire that led the Israelites out of Egypt or like the wind and fire that Elijah heard and saw on Mount Horeb. This roaring whoosh of wind and divided tongues of fire continues to move about where it wills working in surprising, shocking, unimaginable, and yes, especially uncomfortable ways, propelling us, inspiring us to move beyond our complacent comfort zones. The spirit of God stirs the hearts and imaginations. This flame of the Holy Spirit is actually Emmanuel's logo, representing energy and passion our intention to be a faithful people who shine God's light into the world. Our good news is that God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer will not give up on us, will not give up on this world, even in the midst of its fears and doubts, in the midst of the desire to control, manipulate, or misinterpret it. The spirit continues to be outpoured, moving and sparking, dancing, enlightening God's people to work in God's kingdom so that all may know what is the love and grace, the abundance, hope-filled lives God wishes for all, for all, surprise. God risks everything through Jesus Christ and in the unleashing of the Holy Spirit for you, for me, for us, for all. In her poem, The Hill We Climb, Amanda Gorman asks, when day comes, we ask ourselves, where can we find light in this never ending shade? And her poem goes on to not only name the painful, brutal parts of American history, but she answers her own question. We will rebuild, reconcile, and recover. And every known nook of our nation and every corner called our country, our people diverse and beautiful will emerge battered and beautiful. When day comes, we step out of the shade, aflame and unafraid. The new dawn blooms as we free it. 
for there is always light. If we're only brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. Amen. Let us pray. Fiery God, burn down systems of power that demean and destruct. Rage with us like a mighty wind when people are made vulnerable and are not protected. Speak the language of interdependence to our hearts that we might not be stuck in despair, but empowered toward co-creating in the kingdom of God. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. An affirmation of faith. We believe in God above us, maker and sustainer of all life, of sun and moon, of water and earth, of all people and genders. We believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, the word made flesh, born of a woman, servant of the poor, tortured and nailed to a tree. A man of sorrows, he died forsaken. He descended into the earth to the place of death. On the third day, he rose from the tomb. He ascended into heaven to be everywhere present and his kingdom will come on earth. We believe in God within us the Holy Spirit, Spirit of Pentecostal fire, life-giving breath of the church, spirit of healing and forgiveness, source of resurrection and eternal life. Amen. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Passionate God, you sent your spirit through the gifts of fire, wind, and word. As you equip the disciples for their work, equip us to bring the good news to all those who long for you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Restoring God, Wind and flame bring life and destruction throughout the world. We pray for those who work with wind energy, for migratory birds, for protection for lands facing destructive fire, and for forestry managers and firefighters. We give you thanks, restoring God, for gentle rains that have helped quell the wildfires in many areas. Many evacuees have returned home and the earth is given the moisture needed in this growing season. Continue to provide the earth all that is needed. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Ever-present God, your spirit embraces all. Send your spirit of understanding to immigrants, refugees, and any experiencing language barriers. Bless the workers of translators, ESL teachers, ambassadors, and international peace organizations. Safely guide those fleeing war and danger. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Merciful God, you anoint us with your spirit. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, and hospice workers as they care for those in need. We pray for all who seek your comfort, those who are ill and in need of your consolation. Especially we pray for Eduardo Ensaldo, Chris Atkins, Catherine Ash, Shirley Burns, Doreen Holland, 
and Nico and Betty Matthias, Mary Mackay, Gary Meckling, John Moore, Linda Popkin, Larry Seal, Dwayne Siemens, Edna Vibert, Karen Wright, and Gail Zink. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Generous God, you impart a variety of gifts. Set aflame the desire to learn from one another, especially those who differ from us. Make us an ever inclusive community, walking alongside those who continue to experience discrimination, hate, racism, injustice, especially we pray for black, indigenous and people of color and those in the LGBTQ2S plus community in a time of increasing insecurity and judgment. Inspire our work and ministry, spirit of life, that all be given true equality. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Living God, we give thanks for those who have died to new life in you. We pray for the family and friends of Natasha Fox, comfort all who mourn, and give them a sign of sure and certain hope in you, God of life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us, praying in the language of your heart, or your first language. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Receive the blessing of our God. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation.
Go in peace, serve the risen one. Thanks be to God.